Shabbos, Erev Tov, good evening. The Mesechet Yomot of Tezayin Amud Alev 87A1. Says the Gemara. Remember, we were talking about the Mishnah. And in the Mishnah, we were talking about what happens in certain cases when different people were passing away and the woman was only eating because of her child. Okay, so this was based upon the Mishnah and Pevav Mubet starting over there. Right? If you remember there, we said that in every single case, we were talking about the suit of a woman eating Truma or the Heter, whether it's because of her husband or her children. Okay? So the way that we started off, just a very quick, quick uh, review on the Mishnah. One more time. Mishnah, Pevav Mubet on the bottom. A Bat Yisrael gets married to a Kohen, she's allowed to get married to eat Truma. If the husband dies, but then he has, she has a son, she can eat because of the son. If then again she comes and she gets married to the Levi, she's allowed to, get to eat Maaseh. But she cannot eat Truma anymore because now she's the wife of the Levi, not a Kohen. Met, if the Levi dies and she has a child, so she can eat a Maaseh. If she now goes and she gets married to Israel, so now she can't eat Truma, she can eat Maaseh. If the husband dies and she has a child, so now he's, she could still not eat Truma and Maaseh. That was the first part of the Mishnah. Second part of the Mishnah. Met the Nam Israel, if the Israel child dies, so Chalva Maaser, she is allowed to eat, right, from Maaser because of her child, the Levi, but she cannot eat Truma. If the child from the Levi dies, so now she's allowed to eat Truma, right? Why? Because of the son of the Kohen. If the child of the Kohen dies, so now she's not allowed to eat not Truma and not Maaser. They design with Aleph on the top, yeah, 87 80 on the top. Yeah. But when she said, he said, if you have a bad coin that she come to Israel, she's not allowed to eat a truma. Met, what happens to the husband, the Jew, the regular Jew dies, and she has a child, so she's not allowed to eat truma. Right? Why? Because she has a child from Israel. But she comes down, she gets married to the Levi, she's allowed to eat a truma. If the, if the Levi dies, and now she has a child, she's still allowed to eat maaseh. Now what happens is if she gets married to a Kohen, she could eat truma. If the Kohen dies, and now yes, she has a child, she could eat Truma. If the son of the Kohen dies, so now she can't eat Truma, but she could only eat the uh, Maaser because of the child of the Levi. If the, the child of the Levi dies, so now she can't eat Maaser, she could only eat right regular food. If the child of the Israel dies, then she goes back to her father's house because now she has nothing, right? Well, sorry, she goes back to the father's house, which is about Kohen, right? Because she was about Kohen from the beginning. And this is what it means. She's going to eat from the food of her father. Okay? This is the Mishnah. Says the Gimana. The Gimana comes and says, and we say that when you have a Bat Israel that has a child, a Kohen, right? So now, and she's going to become prohibited because of getting married to other people. Okay? So, Met Ben What happens now if the child from the Levi dies? The Gimana says, Tohal. The truma, she's allowed to eat from the truma. So says the Gemara, the Hadra Afa Mishum Benamini. How do we know that she goes back to eating because of her son? One more time. She had a child, right? From the Kohen, right? She had a child from a Kohen or from a Levi. Doesn't matter which one, right? What happens? Right? No, no, no. One thing. She could even be about to sell. Doesn't matter, right? Now, what happens is she has a child from a Kohen or a Levi. She's eating. Like the Kohen Levi. She got married to a Kohen. She's eating like the Kohen. He dies. If she has a child, she's still allowed to eat to Truma. Why? Because of the son. Let's say she got married to a Levi. Right? And she has a child. All the time that she's married to the Levi, she's eating Maaseh. The Levi dies. Well, she still has a son, the Levi. So she could eat Maaseh. Says the Gimana, but how do you know that it retracts? What do you mean retracts? When she was married to the Kohen, she was eating Truma. She got married to the Levi. She stops eating Truma, she starts eating Maaseh. Even though she still has a, a food, she still has a child from the Kohen. Now she comes and the, 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 the Levi dies, she gets married to the Israel. Now she's not allowed to eat anything. She has a child from the, from the Israel, she's still not allowed to eat anything. If the child from the Israel dies, she goes back to the Levi. Now when she goes back to the Levi, the Levi already died, but she eats the Maaseh because of her child. How do we know that she goes back to eat because of her child? That's the given asking. So Amar Rabbi Abba Amar says Rabbi Abba in the name of Ab, but Ubat. What does that mean? It says in the pasuk, "Veshav al bet Avia kinulei amilech ma Avia tokeni." But it says, "Ubat Cohen kiti al manav dusha veshav bet Avia." What does it mean, Ubat Cohen? What does it mean, Ubat Cohen? Right? Why does it say U, the extra vav? 
So he says it comes to include, right, that even though, right, that's what the, from the extra bab, we're going to include Chazanat Isha, she ain't about Kohen, but she has a Zera from the Kohen, that she's Chazeret Le'etera, Biglal, of her child. So says the Gemara, Keman, who is this called, right? Like Rabbi Akiva, that is Vavet, because according to Rabbi Akiva, we are going to expound even an extra bab. Meaning the fact that you have an extra wow, an extra vav, it's already enough. Yeah, and you're going to make a bit of So says the Gemara, no, it's not going according to the Kiva. Afilu, Tema Rabban, and even if you're going to tell me it's according to the rabbis, Kula Ubat, Kayetera. If you're going like according to the rabbis, so now they don't make this extra, they don't make this dirasha because of this extra vav, but rather what happens is that the entire Pasuk, Ubat Kohen, Kiti El Musar, Vekule Vekule, Right, that's right. Kiti Almanau Grusha, Vesham Betabia, Kiruna Velacho Vetra. The entire Pasuk is extra. Since the entire Pasuk is extra, that's why we're going to learn that it goes back and she would eat again because of her child, even though she got married to somebody else and she continued going. Tanu Rabbanam, we learned to the right that Kishi Chosere, when she goes back to her father's house, yeah, it says Chosere li Truma. She only goes back to eat Truma, but she doesn't go back to eat Chosere Vashon. Yes. Yes, exactly. Follows the coin. That's why she's allowed to go back to the father's house. So therefore, it says over here that she's allowed to come and she's allowed to eat from Truma, but she's not allowed to eat from Chazem So I'm in Chazam, Rabbi Nabashila says, "No, it's not Rabbi Nabashila." My God, how do you know this? It says, "He be Truma to Kodashim lo tochel, but Muram in Kodashim lo tochel." Something which is above Kodashim, which is basically Chazem Veshol, right? She's not allowed to. Eat. I mean, she could eat still Truma, but not Chazem Veshol. Chazem Veshol is special. Okay. What does it mean, Milechem? Milechem, from the bread of her father she could eat, below Kolechem, and not all of the bread of her father. What does that mean? She could eat from her father's house, but not everything from the father's house. This comes to school that she's not allowed to eat the Chazeva Shok. Okay? Fine. So, Matki, Rabbi Barhama, Rabbi Barhama comes and he asks the following question. Ema, why don't we just say that mi lechem is prat la parat Why don't we say that when it says mi lechem, it comes to, ex- to exclude a parat edari? What do we have to say? <laughs> we know that what happens is that she goes back to her father's house, right? But it's coming to exclude that the na'ara goes back to her father's house after a manad urusha, but the father cannot do a parat edari just like what it was before. So that's mi lechem lo kol lechem, meaning that it's not talking about food. We know that the father, until the girl gets married, the father does a tanam right? So, and also the husband, she's married, so then the husband does it instead of the father. But here, even though she's going back to the father, but she does not go back to hafarat nedarim of the father. So, how do you know that it's talking about chazem shok? Maybe it's a parat nedarim. So, answer the gemara. Malav alav says, kvar paska tanam nedarishmel. We already learned this in tanam nedarishmel. Tanam nedarishmel. And then that Almanau Grusha, Yakumalea, what does it mean that the letter of Almanau Grusha, Yamoraya? Matamulam, what is this coming to teach you? Valo Mitsa Miklal Av. One second, she already was outside of her father. Because if Mitgashon is Banav, she was widowed or divorced, she's already outside of the father. Umutsa Miklal Bal, she's already outside of the husband as well. Ella, but rather, Arish Masara Av, the Shukha Bal, if the father gave over now to the Shukhim of the Bal, or Shemasu Shukha Av, the Shukha Bal, or they gave over from the Shukha Av to Shukha Bal. And she was widowed or divorced in a way. How am I going to read this? So, what does that mean? Are we going to say now that this is called the Betavia or Bet Bala? What's going on here? Once she goes one moment outside of the property of the husband, of the, of the father, Shuben Yokola. Second that she goes out of the father's house, she doesn't do a parat anymore. Yeah, that's it. She's out of the father's house. She doesn't do a parat anymore. Yeah? It becomes the husband. Rav Safra Amar, Rav Safra comes and he says, Milechem avia tochen, lechem velo basa. It says, the reason why we say lechem now, lechem and it's not meat, which means that here, when we say that the bat kohen goes back to the lechem avia, it means lechem and not of a, of a ma'achal, which is Kodesh. So it's much more only bread, and not basar, which is like the chaziva shok, which is the meat. But Papa, Papa, Papa comes and he says, another place. Milecham avia tochel, lecham akanui lavia, something which is bought to the father. This comes to exclude from the chaziva shok, mishpangabor kazach. What does that mean? 
when we're talking about truma, truma is given to the Kohen. The Chazeh Vashok is not given to the Kohen. The Chazeh Vashok is given to the Kohen from Hashem, from Shulchan Gavua, not from a human being. Meaning when it's to, to do a truma, I have the choice, who do I give my truma to? Am I going to give it to this Kohen or another Kohen? But here, there's no choice. The Rav Amar and Rav says, Let Chazeh Trupa Vashok Truma Tochelu Atau Vanecha Uvnotecha Itach. What does that mean now, Ita, with you? Izman Shem Itach, which means that during the time that they're going to be in the house of their father, right, that they didn't get married. But once they get married, now they're not anymore considered they're not Kohanim, and even after they became divorced or widowed, they're not anymore Itach, they're not with you. They're already separate. You understand? Okay, it could be that they're staying by you because they're divorced, but they're separate. They're not the exact same. So Amar Avada Barava, says Avada Barava, Tana, we learn in a Baraita. Yeah, but she's going to go back to the house of her father. She goes back to the truma, not to the chazer v'shok. But for her son, she goes back also to the chazer v'shok. That means if she has a child, it's a kohen. She does eat the chazer v'shok. Okay, even though she went and she got married to Yisrael in between. So as the Mordechai Amnon and Shmata commanded Ravashi, he went to the Mordechai and he said this right in front of Ravashi. So Amar, he said, How do you know this? He says, you learn it from Ubat Kohen. So he says, Is it better? I don't understand. If right now the Bat Kohen herself, she goes back to her father's house, she doesn't eat the Chazim Ashok, why in the world now can she go back because of her son and eat the Chazim Ashok? Yeah? yeah. So he says, no. When she goes back to her father's house, there's an exclusion. So since there's an exclusion, she goes back, but not for the Chazim Ashok. To do with that, she's going to be eating because of the child. There's no exclusion with it. So, for, since there's no exclusion, that's why she's going to be able to eat chazev ashok and not only teruma. Okay, two dots. Everybody with me? Bat kohen shenisat to Israel. We learned to the Nishan when a bat kohen gets married to Israel, and then the Israel dies. She has a child, so she's not allowed to eat teruma. Taro when we learned to the right of the Shaval bet Avia, she goes back to her father's house. Prat the Shomerit Yavam. This comes to school also that if she's waiting for Yavam, because if she's waiting for Yavam, she's Zikukas, Zikuk to the Yavam. And if she's Zikukas to the Yavam, she's not really in their father's house. Kinurea, better be what is Kinurea? Prat the That means that if she becomes, let's say, an Almana, but she's pregnant. So since she's filled with the child, right? So therefore, in these both cases, she does not go back to eat Truma, right? Even after the death of the husband. Because again, bazaar and she's having the zar. Okay. So says the Gemara, Valodinu. It says once again, it's a kavachomer. Uma be makom shelo asa vlad mina dishon ke vlad mina sheni. If right now we even in a case where we didn't make the child from the first husband, like the child, like from the second husband, leputra mina ibum to come and say that she's going to be putra from the ibum, which means like this: What happens if she got married, right, and she has a child? And then the husband dies. And then she gets married to the second husband. And she dies, with, she dies without a child. So now she needs the boom because of the second husband. Now, the, the child of the first husband doesn't exempt her. Boom. So now, if it's going to be now that this uba is like you, which means that this woman, the husband dies and she's pregnant, is going to exempt her from Yibum. So, that in a place where we made the blood from the first one, like the second one, to make a so shouldn't be the same alakhadim? Which means, at the end of the day, you should make her pasul because of the uba. So therefore, since we found that the Torah comes and it makes a gedim, uh, that the, the child is going to come and help to exempt from ibum more than in other case, to be posel truma. So therefore, when it says that a child is considered a blood to do with the exempting of ibum, Koshik and it should be a, it should be disqualifying her from eating truma. Right? Because it's kinurea. So says the Gemara, no. Mali asai bar kilud minyan ibu. What does it mean that to do with ibu? Sharia asa metim kachayim. Because this child, which is met, is like a vlad chai. Which means if the husband died and he left the child, she's tura from the ibu even after the child dies. Okay? Na asa ubar kilud minyan min truma. And it's also going to be a ubar like kilud. To do with the psul of truma as well. Shelo asametim kichayim that it didn't consider him that he's alive, right? Because if the husband died, right? So therefore, what happens is 
is that she's not going to be a surah with Rumam because of the zera as long as he's alive. Once he dies, now it's going to be permitted. So this comes to exclude a mu'ubenet. You have to write down a mu'benet that she's pregnant, and you have to write down also that she doesn't have children. Why? The Torah only told us that she doesn't have children, right? I would have thought to say only in a case where there they don't have children from the stranger, she cannot go back to eat truma. Because at the beginning, she was one body before she got married. Now she's two bodies because her and her child. But if she's pregnant, then at the beginning she was one body, and also now she's one body. It was always one body. So she's allowed to start eating truma, right? Until she doesn't give birth, she's allowed to eat truma. Why? She's one body still. So that's why that's why I need I need the kinurea. If it was only going to be written the meikara gufa, because at the beginning itself gufa strika eighty seven b. The body was a, uh, was before she got married, right? The body was empty. The hashka gufa malia. Now her body is full. Aval zera enla. But when it says that she doesn't have any children, the meikara gufa strika hashka gufa strika. That from the beginning, before she got married, right? It was an empty body, and now it's also an empty body. I would say no. So tzricha. That's what you need. Also, zera enla to teach you that a woman that has a child, right? She doesn't go back. Like yes, it counts like a child, and therefore it doesn't go yeah. back to eating truma. Okay. Now we have a stiman. And this is how we're going to finish the pen. Okay, Siman Amale Lona Seven Seven Tana Seven Lona Seven Vlad Yubam Truma Yibum Truma Siman. Okay, says the Gemara. We're going to explain this is the first one. Okay, Birura Dishon Amale the Yehuda the Iskarta LeRava says the Yehuda the Iskarta Tura Lona Asa Metim Kachayim Inyan Yibum. We don't say that the Metim are like Chayim to do with the Yibum, which means right if the husband had a child at the time of the death and then he died, the child died, so now she becomes an Almana. Right to do with the katibu, mikol kal vachomer from yakal vachomer uma b'makom shasav lavin neshon tum lavin neshon yilu potzavin tumah. If right now we say that the child from the first husband is like the child from the second husband to to disqualify her from eating truma, as lo asam etim kachayim, and therefore if the husband dies, we didn't make it a what that she goes back to her teh. The makom shelo asav lavin neshon tum lavin neshon yilu potzavin yibum eno dish lo asam etim kachayim tamu lomar comes to teach you. What does that mean? If we're not going to say metim kachayim to do with the petur of ibum, it could be that she's going to come and she's going to get he's going to get married to an almana, right? That the husband that that she had a child, and now what happens is she's going to the right the first child is going to die, and now she's going to need ibum. Now it's not proper. Imagine right now a woman gets married, yeah, she has a child, yeah, from the first husband, the first husband dies. Does she need a boom? No, she has a child. She has a child. Yeah. She gets married to a second husband. What happens now? She gets married to the second husband, and now the the child of the first husband dies. If you're going to tell me now that she needs to do a boom, oh, she's married already to a new man. She's going to start doing a boom now for the first husband. We don't. We don't. Uh, no. 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 We don't do. That's what it says here. Vaday asta katu metin kachayim as if they're already alive to do the tura bincham ibum. So if she's tura ibum. Once she was stood up from Yibum from the beginning, that's it. We're not going to obligate them later on if the child dies to, to another Yibum. No, 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 no. We don't do that. Second, second case. But to do with Truma, it is like this. Just like, a, just like in a place where they did not do the blood of Yibum. Like from the blood from the Shri to exempt from Yibum. Nevertheless, it did make Metim Kachayim. What does that mean? If right now the husband died and he had a child, so then now there's no more any more almanut. There's no more zibum. So in a place now where they did make the first child to the second child to be posel for truma, shouldn't we say also that it's going to be metim kachayim, right? Which means that she should be a surah truma because another child. Tamulumar comes teach you v'zera in la va'enla. It says no that she doesn't have a child. Then she goes back to the head of truma. Va'enla and right now she doesn't have it either. So since she doesn't have it, that's why it doesn't go. Okay, so that was going to be the second biru, third one. From the Kavachome. Right, at the end of the day, also in this case, you're going to have a child which is coming for the first husband, which is going to exempt the, the zika 
to the brothers. So Tamulumanu ben lelav, right? He says one second. He says that if she doesn't have a, a boy, then there's a mitzvah yibum. Vea endo. Here, the second husband is going to have children. So that's why the second husband will do yibum because he didn't have any children. What do I care that uh, that she has a child from the first husband? The second husband doesn't have a child, so therefore he has to do yibum. Fourth one. What does that mean? Again, as long as the Bat Kohen does not have a child, right, from the second husband. So she goes back to eating Truma, even though she has a child from the first husband. Tamul Omar comes to teach you, Vezera Enla, only she doesn't have children, then she goes back to the first husband to eat the Truma. Right, mean like she goes back, right? So he says to the husband or father's house, that yes, but here she does have a child. So since she does have a child, she does not go back to eat from the father's house. So yes, We're continuing now on the tenth chapter. Okay, Perek Asiri. Tenth chapter says, Imagine right now a woman goes and she travels to the diaspora. And all of a sudden people come and they tell her, Met Palech, your husband died, and he said, and she gets married because of his testimony. Right? And then all of a sudden, the husband comes back from the dead. Yeah, he comes back. It's happened many times. Yeah? yeah. It's the woman. No, it's the man. No, the woman, woman that her husband went to the United ah, okay. And then they told her that their husband passed away. Now, the whole question, we're going to have to speak about how many witnesses, everything. Now, she went and she got married. Yeah, she went and she got married. And then afterwards, the husband comes back alive. Yeah? Oh, what's going to happen? Yeah, he says, you have to come to me. Yeah, okay. She has to leave both husbands. She needs a get from both husbands. She doesn't get all the kituba from both husbands. She doesn't get parnasa from both husbands. She doesn't get the fruits from both husbands. She doesn't get the clothing from both husbands. If she did take one of these things, she has to give it all back. The children that now she has are mamzerim from both of the, of the, the husbands. If one of them were kohanim, they don't become tamet to her when she dies. And also both husbands are not going to be so chel. Not in whatever she finds. Not in whatever she works. Not in dream for her. If she's about to say she becomes Tuda to the Kehuna, she becomes like a Zona, so therefore she's not going to be, she's disqualified to the Kehuna. Ubat Levi, if she was the Bat Levi, she becomes disqualified from Minamaser. Ubat Kohen, if she was the Bat Kohen, in the Truma, she becomes disqualified from the Truma. Ve'en Yoshim shel Dev, Yoshim shel Dev Kitubata. Nobody inherits her Kituba. Vimetu. Now, if they actually died before getting divorced to her, so look how much punishment we just said we just gave to this woman. You saw how much. <laughs> she's she's going to think about it twice before she comes and she starts fooling around and uh, getting married again. Rabbi Yosef says, Rabbi Yosef says, Ketubata liseb ala rishon. The paying off of the ketuba is on the first time. Rabbi Lazar says, no, and Rishon is still going to be zakam. The first time is still going to be in. As Zoche and everything that she finds or in her work or whatever, Hatran Edarim. The third Shita, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Biata or Chalitza, Meachim Shel Bishon Poteret Zalata. The the relations or Chalitza of that means the Yibum or the Chalitza of the brother of the first husband is going to exempt the Tzara, the co-wife. The En of Lab Minu Mamzer, the the child from the first husband is not a Mamzer. Okay. Right. Okay. Fine. Then the Gemara says, What happens if she got married without the permission of the Bedin? So it says over here, Because then she's considered Anusa. She's like force majeure. No, she's force majeure, which means like this. Beforehand, we were talking about a case where the woman got married because of, of one witness. And therefore, even though we're lenient that it's only one witness, and therefore she can get married, but there's a lot of punishments on the side. But what happens now if there was, without the Rashut of Betim, why? There were two witnesses. Two witnesses came and they said the guy dropped dead. So now what is she supposed to do? She had two witnesses, kosher witnesses. There's no leniencies involved. Two witnesses, they came and they said, it's yeah? 
and then the top it. So it says here, Mutel Lachon, she's allowed to go back to the first husband because she's considered a Nusa. Next, instead of Bibadin, if she got married also to Bibadin, which means I'll be a dude of one witness, that says she goes from Baal from both of the husbands, she's going to be put up from the Korban Khatatos because it's the Yahid that she did it, right? I'll be Bibadin. Loni said of Bibadin, if it wasn't through Bibadin, so then she has to leave right from the second husband and she's obligated to the Korban Khatat as well, but she didn't have it out. Because Betin, the power of Betin is so powerful that basically now they said that she doesn't have to bring a korban if she didn't appear Betin. For Rahu, Betin, right, Lina say, when after the Betin came and they told her she could get married with one, through one witness, and then after she went and she had relations with somebody else, they soon, right, so now, right, she is Chayev in the korban. Why? Because they only permitted her to get married. They didn't permit her to fool around. I mean, they didn't permit this woman to start sleeping around with men. They permitted this woman to come and to get married. So the fact that she didn't get married and she did something else, so therefore she's obligated in the korban. Says the Gemara. Yeah? Eight away. Rabbi Chaki, pay attention to the time. Midiktani seifa. The Gemara. Midiktani seifa from the fact that we learned to the seifa of the Mishnah Niset. Right? She loves true that if she gets married without permission, Muter el Achzolo, she's allowed to go back to the original husband. She loves true Betin el Abedim. Obviously, we're talking about it. That it was with not the permission of a deen, but whether it was the permission of a deen. Miklal, so it's mashma, the duration, it's mashma, it's a deen. Obeyed echad, and we're talking about one witness. Alma ed echad, you're going to tell me now that one witness is believed? We usually know that you never believe one witness. It's nanam yim yom to learn another case. Right? Yes, exactly. We're going to see right now. This is our case. Huch zekul yom masin al pi ed a ed mi pi ed. Vi'isha mi pi isha, vi'isha mi pi evid mi pi shibcha. Also, you see from here, there's another Mishnah later on, that if right now it was a Chazaka, that she's going, we're going to come, we're going to get her married, whether it's going to be an Ed Miti Ed, Ed Miti Ed means that it was one witness that told another witness. So it wasn't that you heard it directly from the first original person. It's testimony from another testimony. Number two, from a woman, right? From another woman, or a woman from even an Eved or a Shibcha. Alma, so you see from here, Ed Echad is going to be believed. So says the Gemara. Out, now Nami, we also learned. Ed Echad Omer. One, one Ed comes and he says, "Achal Tachelav Do Eit Chelav." Vehu Omer, and he comes and he says, "I didn't eat Chelav." Patur, he doesn't have to bring a Chatat. Tama, why? Because the fact that he said, "Lo Achal Ti," I didn't eat Chelav. But if he kept his mouth shut, Ha'ishdik, if he kept quiet, Meheman, the guy would have been believed, even though it's one witness. Alma Ed Echad Meheman. So you see from here that in all these cases, one witness is going to be believed. So from here, we just brought down three different Mishnayot that are teaching you that Ed Echad is Neman Bisurim. So says the Gemara, how do we know then that Ed Echad is Neman Bisurim? The Tanya was learned in the Raita, oh, Nala Elam Chatatot. What does that mean that it was known to him as Chatat? His sin. Not that other people are going to tell him. I would have thought to say that even if it's not denying it, yeah, Patur, he would be Patur. Tabulumar, oh, hold on. What does it mean, Mikomako? In any way or form, even if it's going to be to other people. So the Pasuk is coming and teaching us that when it says Elav and Hoda, it's teaching that Edut could obligate a Chatat only if it's known the Chet, which means that he's not denying it. Because if he denies it, there's nothing worth talking about. So it says, that's the case. If you're going to tell me the two witnesses came and nobody's arguing, so why do you need a Pasuk? Why do you need a Pasuk? Right? You have two witnesses and nobody's arguing. But rather we're talking about one witness. So if he's not uh, denying it, he's going to be believed. Now we learn from here, one witness is going to be believed. So says the Gemara, we might have been the Meiman. How do you know now that he's going to be believed? Maybe because he's keeping quiet. And when you keep quiet, yeah, he's coming, he says, when you keep quiet, it's like you're admitting to it. So when you keep quiet and somebody says something, you're actually admitting to it. So says the Gemara, tell you what's the proof. We learned in the Seifa. Imagine two witnesses come and they tell you, Achal Tachel, you ate Chelet. The who are married, he says, Rita, I'm not happy, I didn't eat Chelet. Patur is the main attempt. Rabbi Meir, Mechayev, Rabbi Meir says, you're going to be Chayev Chata. Amar, Rabbi Meir says, Rabbi Meir, Kama Chomer. Ime viu Shnaim li de Mita Chamura, if two of them to bring to Mita, meaning two witnesses come and they say that the person did something which Chayev made Mita, they kill him. So they can't bring him with korban. Saying, what's worse, a korban or mita? Obviously, mita is death. It's much worse than than uh, korban. So therefore, obviously, so he comes and he says, they come and they say, 
Umay mirze lomar mezid ayut. What if I'm going to come and I'm going to say that he was a mezid? Right? I was mezid. So reisha, so obviously the reisha, then it's talking about my time to come to chayv and the So why is the rabbi going to be saying that he's going to be chayav? Ilem amishum gebeim anem, you're going to tell me to be but it's maybe alma. You've got two witnesses. So therefore, the rabbi of the chamat even though they're going to be machdish, in umem, they're going to be believed. So kapat and the the rabbis are going to exempt him. Elalav shemami, elalav yishum bi'ishtik, but rather because what? Because ishtik, he was keeping quiet. Ushtika keodad and when you keep quiet, it's like you're admitting. It's like you're approved. 